People will be donning their uh, glasses today to watch the solar eclipse across parts of the United States. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. Uh, in a moment, we're going to look at that. Uh, we're also going to look at the climate crisis, as scientists warn three of the most significant human-caused greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, carbon dioxide, methane and nitrous oxide, reached new record highs again last year. That's that's according to uh, U.S. National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, NOAA, which said global carbon dioxide levels are now over 50 percent higher than they were before mass industrialization due to the burning of fossil fuels, deforestation and livestock agriculture. New data has also confirmed that March was the hottest ever recorded and the tenth consecutive month to set a global heat record. Meanwhile, climate scientists continue to raise alarm about the catastrophic impacts of rising temperatures in Antarctica after researchers in 2022 recorded the largest hike in temperature ever measured in the coldest region on Earth. For more, we're joined by Peter Kalmus, climate activist and a climate scientist at NASA's Jet Propulsion Lab, speaking on his own behalf, not on behalf of NASA. He's joining us from Raleigh, North Carolina. Welcome back to Democracy Now! It's great to have you with us, Dr. Kalmus. Before we go to the climate catastrophe, I want to talk to you about today's much anticipated solar eclipse. Millions of people across North America donning protective glasses this afternoon afternoon to witness the eclipse when the moon covers all or a portion of the sun. Beginning in Mexico's Pacific coast, from there the path will continue into Texas and across dozens of other states before the eclipse enters Canada in southern Ontario. Um, and here in New York, six prisoners in Sullivan County at the Woodburn Correctional Facility will be among those gathering outside to view the rare event after winning a lawsuit that argued forcing them to remain indoors was a violation of their religious beliefs. The prison had issued a lockdown during the time of the eclipse, which will peak in New York at 325. It's been, what, seven years since the last total solar eclipse? Can you explain it to us? Yeah, so I um, I did have the good fortune to see the eclipse in 2017 in Oregon, and it was quite stunning, actually, quite amazing, something to see. So, um, you know, I was trained as an astrophysicist. My, my training is in uh, physics, and I was an astrophysicist before I was a climate scientist. And um, I'm going to take this back to kind of my understanding of uh, global heating. Uh, this planet, we live on a planet. Uh, it's a sphere. It's you're going around the sun. There's the moon going around this planet. And every so often, it's going to go right in front of the sun, and we're going to have a shadow on the Earth. And that's all that's happening. It's exactly the same as any object blocking a light source and creating a shadow, except it reminds us that we are on a planet, and we are in the vast, vast uh, cosmic space, right? The, the distances between planets, between planets and the sun, are so huge that it's very infrequent that you get uh, the moon lining up uh, just so in front of the sun to create that shadow that completely blocks out the sun for a couple of minutes. Um, we are on a very fragile uh, place with a very fragile climate system that is very much uh, able to be pushed by uh, humans burning fossil fuels, for example, and that's what we're starting to see as things get hotter and, and hotter. So I think this is a good opportunity for, for people to reflect on um, the fact that we live on a very fragile and beautiful um, rock in space, the only place we know in the cosmos to support life. And why is it important that we wear these glasses? As I put them on right now, and now people, are, there is a, um, a rush to get these, I can see nothing just sitting here in the studio through these kind of sunglasses. <laughs> Explain what they do. Yeah, well, they basically block a lot of the light from the sun so that you don't go blind and you don't hurt your eyes. So please don't look directly at the sun. Mm. And what about pets? What about animals? Um, what happens to them? I mean, eyes work the same in humans as in animals. So don't, you know, I, I think most animals will uh, have enough sense to not look directly at the sun.
<laughs> or to don these glasses. Uh, the New York yeah. Times had an interesting piece, the eclipse that ended a war and shook the gods forever. Thales, a Greek philosopher 2,600 years ago, was celebrated for predicting a famous solar eclipse and founding what came to be known science, uh, as science. Your final thoughts on this, Dr. Peter Kalmus? Uh, I'm not, I'm, you know, I really want to talk about global heating and the climate crisis. So, um, you know, I, I, I think, you know, science is, it's, it seems strange to have to remind people of this, but science is just an incredibly, it's, it's a treasure. It's a human treasure. And we, we're seeing so much anti-science right now, which breaks my heart. Um, so many people are easily misled by disinformation uh, from the fossil fuel industry, from politicians. Uh, it breaks my heart that somebody, for example, who spreads lies and who is anti-science could actually be elected into public office and continue the damage. It's, uh, as a society, we're also very fragile. We, we live in a very fragile climate system, but, but we're very easily misled by disinformation. And science is essentially the antidote. Science is how we understand reality. And we, when we don't pay attention to what's really happening, for example, on planet Earth, it's incredibly dangerous. And right now we're in a situation, in my opinion, with global heating, where billions of lives are at risk. So let's talk about global heating. Um, uh, the solar eclipse apparently brought down um, empires because people were so frightened by it. We'll see if um, climate activism uh, takes on governments to change their positions. If you can talk about these firsts that we're experiencing, the last one I talked about in Antarctica, um, uh, the hottest uh, year on record uh, we just passed there, what does all of this mean, Peter? Right. So, the fossil fuel industry is still expanding. Um, they're controlled by very rich people who have all of the power. Um, the power structures in this society, as you well know, are uh, well as you well know, are geared towards the the very rich. Um, they control a lot of the media. Uh, they spread disinformation. The public right now, uh, because the planet's getting so hot, and as we've seen since March of 2023, as you mentioned, the last 10 months being the hottest on record, we are. It looks to me like we are entering a sort of potentially new regime a potential acceleration in global heating. Uh, the climate scientist community does not have a very good understanding on why things are going so off the charts over the last year or so. It's deeply disturbing to me. Um, the fossil fuel industry is the cause, make no mistake. When that gets expanded, you release more carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, more methane into the atmosphere, and that is going to make the planet get hotter. Um, in 2021, six fossil fuel executives went in front of Congress. They were asked directly, is, is climate change, is global heating an urgent crisis? They said yes. They were asked directly, will you stop spreading disinformation? They would not agree to doing that, which is tantamount to them saying that they will continue spreading disinformation. Um, I cannot think of anything more evil than for people for these executives and lobbyists and their uh, lawyers to be continuing to profit, to line their pockets at the irreversible habitability, like destruction of habitability of the earth. Um, I should probably mention who those CEOs were in 2021 who went before Congress. They were Darren Woods, the CEO of Exxon, uh, Michael Worth, the CEO of Chevron, David Lawler, the CEO of BP, Gretchen Watkins, the president of Shell. Mike Somers, the president of the American Petroleum Institute, and Suzanne Clark, the CEO of the Chamber of Congress. So when they are able to kind of block action by essentially bribing politicians, uh, when they control the mainstream media, right, when they buy advertisements in The New York Times and Reuters so that these uh, trusted news sources will not connect the dots. They'll, they'll these news sources will report on a heat wave, they'll report on a, a flood, they'll report on a wildfire, which is climate related, but they will not say that the cause is the fossil fuel industry, that the fossil fuel industry has been lying for decades, has essentially pledged to continue lying, um, that we're on a trend getting warmer and warmer every single year, getting hotter and hotter, which is why all of these records that are being broken should be absolutely no surprise to the public, right? If you're on an escalator towards 
hotter planetary temperatures, of course you're going to be breaking records over and over again. And again, I want to reiterate, the cause is the fossil fuel industry. The only way out of this heat nightmare is to end the fossil fuel industry. They will try to distract you as much as possible, talking about things like carbon capture, talking about things like nature-based solutions. Um, it's all distraction. We have to end the fossil fuel industry. Until we do that, the planet will keep getting hotter. We'll see more deadly heat waves. We'll see them coming more frequently, more intense. We'll see more crop failures. We'll see more flooding. Eventually, we'll see mass amounts of climate refugees, uh, geopolitical destabilization like we've never experienced before. Um, and the public is still essentially asleep because the media is not, the mainstream media is not reporting this with the urgency that it demands as a as an actual emergency. Uh, I wanted to ask you about <clears throat> climate activist Greta Thunberg, who was detained twice by mm -hmm. police at a protest at The Hague in the Netherlands. Before she was arrested, she addressed journalists. This is what she said. We are here because we are facing an existential crisis. We are in a planetary emergency. And we are not going to stand by and let people lose their lives and livelihood and be forced to become climate refugees when we can do something. So that's Greta Thunberg at The Hague. Uh, Peter, you also have been arrested protesting around climate change. Uh, and I wanted to end by asking about this Yellen meeting, Janet Yellen meeting in Beijing. Um, it is said uh, that one point of contention is China's production of green technology technologies like solar power, electric vehicles and lithium batteries, Yellen refusing to rule out tariffs on Chinese green exports, despite Biden's declaring climate change an existential threat to the world. If you can weigh in on this. You know, um, I remember a moment back uh, when, uh, when President Obama was elected to a second term. I wrote a letter to The New York Times saying this is a huge seconds. opportunity for the United States to take leadership uh, on climate change and the, all the economic benefits, the jobs that will come from that. And instead, President Obama uh, expanded the fossil fuel industry, and after his presidency, he bragged about expanding it. We should be looking for all sorts of ways to expand uh, solar and wind and to end the fossil fuel industry. Those are two sides of the same coin. Um, the harder side is actually ending fossil fuels. We should focus on that. But I don't care where uh, solar, where wind comes from, where any of these solutions come from. We need all hands on deck right now. We should, a lot, Thomas, of, a lot more of us should be getting arrested. We have to leave it there.